My name is Angela. My name is Nicole. And welcome to the Ominous Stitch Podcast. Hello, Stitchers. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another amazing Take a Stitch oh. episode of Yay. the Ominous Stitch podcast. I'm Angela. Uh-huh. I never say that when I do this. Because <laughs> we already introduced ourselves. I know, we already ourselves. introduced ourselves. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, but you should know by now. That's Angela. Yeah, I know. Well, we sound the same. We've had this comment where people can't distinguish who is who. And it's Which, really funny to us because we, we definitely think no. we sound different. Yes. <laughs> I don't think I sound anything like Angela. She's got this pretty voice. It's like ethereal. And I'm like this tinny, like weird. No. Like I, sound... I like your voice better. <laughs> no. My voice is all like squeaky and it goes all over the place. And, and yours is like grounded and earthy. And I like your voice better. Well, I'm glad we like each other's voices. <laughs> <laughs> it works out, That's right? Good. <laughs> all right. Enough of that. Oh, Let's gosh. talk about what we're talking about today. Yeah. What's What's got you in stitches, Angela? Okay. So what has me in stitches this week yes. is, so we have a new little kitty cat, I guess. Aww. I don't know. But it there's a little black cat. Okay. It's so cute. Aww. And it started hanging out around Halloween, which is Ooh, ominous, which is, is awesome. Spooky. But you have this little black cat just visits our property. Aww. And I saw it again this morning. And I'm like, uh-oh, we're going to have to like name it. It's going to be our little barn kitty. But thank you, little black cat, wherever you, whoever yeah. you belong to, because you're helping with our squirrel population. Because we have an insane helping. squirrel population here. <laughs> they're multiplying. Like oh, crazy. my gosh. Well, we have so many oak trees and they're dropping so many acorns and the oh. squirrels are just so happy sure sure so we have a bunch of really fat ground squirrels running around everywhere and just they're probably slow holes too. everywhere oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> great so for happy. the cat to catch up yeah. but then i'm like oh i hope the cat doesn't get in with our our chickens and take oh, down no. another oh. one we don't want another true crime on the farm no we don't need that we don't need that that's really funny because this morning we were pulling up to to the school and they i said hey hey there's a black cat over there and they're like where and i was like it's going around the corner and they're like mom Black cats are bad luck. No. Yeah, they were very adamant. So hopefully your cat is not bad luck. Not bad luck. Just a good little kitty that's helping out the farm. Yeah. As long as it doesn't touch my chicken, no. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't happen. Yeah. But anyway, I'm, I'm just really excited. I'm like, oh, we have a little barn kitty. There you go. It's exciting. It's helping you out. Helping us out. So hello, little black kitty you gotta cat. You got to pay Keep it. hanging around. Give it some food. It's working well, on your see, farm. Well, see, that's another thing. It's like, I know it's going to come around more. It, well, if we give it food, it will come around more, but maybe it won't kill the squirrels oh. anymore. Oh. So we want to make sure oh, that it... that's that food. Yeah. Okay, we so the reward sure it is it's, its work. Continues to Got help it. us with our squirrel population. Nice. And so it's like, do we feed it? What do you guys think? Should we give it little treats and feed it to just encourage to it, it to coming? come around? Yeah, maybe. Or yeah, just something small. You don't yeah. need to give it like a whole feast. That's true. Okay. Well, okay. I will keep you guys updated on yes. what we do with the black cat. And maybe it'll help with those ghosts. <gasps> maybe, maybe it's what, what was that? The, from the haunted house, the cat. Oh, oh. bucket, bucket. Oh my God. I forgot it was called, but yeah, it's that ghost cat. <gasps> I don't think it's one of those. No, I hope no, not. This is a sweet kitty. Okay. Yeah. It's not going to eat a corpse? No. Okay. No. <laughs> it's not here for our souls. No. I've come for your yeah. souls. Well, if things get kind of creepy around here, then you can blame the cat. So. <laughs> if it now get you know. creepy around here. <laughs> if it gets even creepier. Oh, my gosh. No, this is a happy farm. Okay. It's all good. Yeah. Happy farm. Happy farm. So my, while I'm talking about the black cat, my, I have an orange kitty cat yes. and he's like doing tricks and flipping around and being so friendly right now, which is very unlike him. Cause usually he's very standoffish. That's true. He's like, don't replace me with another cat. He's, yeah, he's like, you're talking about cats, huh? Yeah. But you know, what's funny is it's pumpkins, right? Yes. And they pumpkin. brought back David S. Pumpkins. Did I you saw see that. <laughs> So he is named after David S. Pumpkin. I know. So he's I know. D.S. Pumpkin. That's so awesome. Yeah. 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 That was exciting. That was really fun to see, huh? Yeah. We immediately showed it to the kids the next oh, morning. We were like, look. They and they were like, it ah. It wasn't as funny the second time around. No. But it was. It was nice. It was like so nostalgic good. almost. It was so nostalgic. Yeah. and so good to see that. I yeah. love it. Thank you for the return of David S. Pumpkins. <laughs> yes. Made my Halloween happy. Good. 
Okay. Good. So what has you in stitches, Miss Nicole? Oh, it's nothing huge, but mm-hmm. I want to see if anybody else is in infatuated with like weird things like Dr. Pimple Popper. <laughs> I love Dr. Pimple I Popper. I love Dr. Pimple Popper. And I um, used to watch Monsters Inside Me. Okay. <gasps> so I was asking Angela earlier. I was like, do you watch this? She's like, no. No. Okay. So Monsters Inside Me. I, I think it's National Geographic. I, I forgot exactly where it's from. I'm terrible with that. But anyway, so I used to watch it constantly. And then they made a podcast and I can't stop listening to it. I'm oh, so no. obsessed with it. It's creepy, but also like like Dr. Pimple Popper, you just can't stop listening to it. So it's it's mostly, you know, parasites, but like people travel to different places and parasites uh-huh. or they eat something raw, which that makes me freak out about sushi oh. now, you know. But one that freaked me out the most was just a kid walking down the street. Uh huh. A fly flies into his eye <gasps> and somehow lays an egg in his eye. Oh, no. So he's got like a maggot in his eye oh. and he wakes up and he doesn't feel it. He right. Right. Because yeah. they're tiny, tiny. Yeah. And he wakes up like basically blind and he's like a he's like in high school he's like a jokester uh-huh. and his mom's like no you're going to school you're just like fooling around right and he's like walks to school he can't see oh, he walks to the bus gosh. stop and he's like can't see his hand in his face oh my god yeah, he's like i'm gonna walk back home and yeah so his mom like realized that this is not a yeah, joke yeah, yeah. and he's like crying oh so he gets checked out by an optometrist and yeah it turns out there's a maggot, maggot eating his eye. <gasps> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. See, you get this gut reaction and then you just like, well, what happens? And so you guys listen to I want to know what happens. Yeah. Well, thankfully, I can't. Did they save his eye? Yes. Yeah, they saved his eye. Okay. They saved oh his eye. Oh my gosh. But it's not always that happy. Sometimes no. people pass away from these weird little parasites that doctors cannot catch right away. They're like, oh, it's this. It's like men. Like one was like, it's meningitis. He'll go away in a week. And no, he's no. still sick. And then it just keeps getting worse and worse until they finally take tests. And then it's like too late. So many stories are popping up in my head that I need to tell you. Okay. No, 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 no. First of all. <laughs> <laughs> so the first one that I want to tell you goes back to uh, my husband. When we got married, we got married in Belize. Right. Which is a small country in Central America. Right. Right. And. My husband was really obsessed with like Dr. Pimple Popper Mm -hmm. and all that stuff at that time. Okay. And just watching videos all the time and grossing himself out and being like, oh, oh. But then he's like, stop watching. Can't stop watching. He's like, I want, I want to see this happen. We're Mm -hmm. going to Belize. I want to see this happen in Belize. I'm like, no, "No, you don't. It's our wedding. We don't want to like anybody. But Uh on our, the night before our wedding, Uh uh-huh. We, we had, we had some friends that came with us. And so I think, um, my husband was, you know, smoking some cigars with some of our buddies. Mm-hmm. One of them got bit by something. <gasps> oh, and so no. it, it swelled really big on his neck. <gasps> oh, and so they went neck? to the clinic uh-huh. the next day uh-huh. and they had to like lance it and pop it and squeeze all the, I think it was a spider bite or something. <gasps> I don't know, but Gross. they had to like squeeze all the stuff out. So my yeah. husband got his wish on our wedding day he to watch it oh, <laughs> live too. Too. That's amazing. I was like, did that make your wedding? What was better, watching that or getting, getting married? married? <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Oh. oh my gosh. I'm glad it, he and he was okay though, right? Oh yeah, yeah. He okay. was fine. He was fine. They just, you know, lanced it and put some medicine on it and he was fine. Okay, good. Because sometimes it's like it pusses and things and then they like do it, but then it's something still in there and they yeah. don't catch it. And yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, he was fine. Okay. Everything was fine. We had a great wedding, That's a great so time. Creepy. But it was just like a little extra bonus that yeah. <laughs> my husband extra. got his wedge. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. And then when you were telling me, I was thinking about um, the, there's one story that has stayed with me since I was little. Uh-oh. And it was, you know, it's an urban legend. Oh, okay. That you tell your, you know, you tell to creep people out when they're little. Okay. It's about the woman with the beehive hairdo Uh and how when women had like beehive hairdos or, you know, big fancy hairdos, they used to not wash their hair often because they wanted to keep their hair. So they would just wake up, fix it, spray it, Mm -hmm. and then, you know, wash their hair maybe once a week or something. Mm Mm-hmm. And so this woman had a beehive hairdo and her head was itching and she just figured, well, it's just because my hair is dirty. And so she just kept spraying it and letting it go until one day she, and it just kept itching and itching and she was getting headaches and it, you know, she's like, what's going on? But she still wouldn't take her hairdo down. And then one day she didn't wake up and then they took her (gasps) hair down and roaches had eaten 
her her scalp and into Ew, her brain. No. Yeah, this is an urban legend. Or urban legend. Okay, okay. Total urban legend. Ugh. But whenever you talk about like Roaches. bugs and yeah, Ooh, so gross, the fly gross, larvae gross, gross, reminded gross, me of gross. that. Yeah. Blah. Okay. I don't know if anybody out there also likes monsters <laughs> inside me. Please share because that would be so fun to like talk about it. But yeah, I can't stop listening. It's, oh. it's bad. I just like constant. I was like taking the dog for a walk. I'm like, let's listen to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. So anyway, that's what's got me in stitches. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. But yes. this week is pretty fun. <gasps> this week is so fun. Yeah. I'm excited to hear the stories. Yeah. I'm excited for the stories and the stitch. This oh, week it's goes so with it. cute. Yeah. So should we dive in? Should we get... Oh, I dive in. Hey! Do you like what I did there? Should we dive in? I love it. Let's get stitching. Okay, Stitchers. So this week we are doing a very nautical theme. Nautical. Right? We're talking about ghost ships mm -hmm. in story time. And so I thought it would be really fun to combine a couple of different things, if this makes sense. So it's a nautical blanket. So we're using navy and white because, you know, those are nautical. very traditional nautical mm -hmm. colors. And this is um, a baby blanket pattern, but it doesn't have to be. You can turn this into, I think it would be a really cute kind of beachy bag because oh, it, yeah, of the nautical that's theme. So cute. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think it would be really cute. So you can do all kinds of things with this. Let us know what you want to do with the stitch. But this is a baby blanket it's pattern. It's really pretty. It's so cute. And it looks like a chevron, but it's done with shell stitches. Yes. So we have Shell. shells, we have nautical. She loves shells because that was so her easy. pattern, guys. <laughs> shells was her thing. I can do that. You can do shells. Okay. So we have the navy and white mm -hmm. shell pattern, and it forms this really cool kind of chevron mm -hmm. thing. So I got this blanket from Annie designcrochet.com. Annie designcrochet.com. And this is the nautical baby blanket. And... What you're going to do is you're going to chain multiples of six. So however big you want this to be for mm -hmm. whatever size project, multiples of six plus three, which is going to count mm -hmm. as your first double crochet and also your little turn, sure, you got it. right? Mm -hmm. So six plus three. So in the instructions, it says 111. So I did 111 and it oh. is the size of a baby blanket. It is the it's size. Small. If you want to double that to make an actual blanket. That yeah, makes, yeah, yeah. Sense. You would do a lot. So for the first row, what we're going to do uh -huh. is you're going to do two double crochets into the third chain from your hook because those first three chains are going to count as your double crochet plus the turning chain. Got it. And so you'll have three double crochets into the third chain, third chain from, the, from hook. the hook. Does that yeah. make sense? Yes, so it does. the, the One, turning two, chain three. plus mm -hmm. two more double crochets. Right. That equals three. Got it. Because math. Math. Okay. Then you're going to skip two chains uh -huh. and then do two one. Chains. Two chains. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> then you're going to do one single crochet in the next chain. Oh, just one single. Okay. One single. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to skip two chains. Skip two. Two and chains. then you're going to do <laughs> five double crochets in the next chain. Easy. Five. five. Okay. Then you're going to skip two. Skip two. And do one single crochet. Oh, okay. So that's what you're doing all the way down. I can do that. Five double crochets. Skip two. One double crochet. Skip two. Five double crochets. And that's the pattern two, the whole time. One single crochet. Skip two. Yeah, okay. that's it. So you're either doing five double crochets. Or skip two. Or a single crochet, skip two. Got it. All the way to the end, and then you have three chains left. Three You're going to skip two, and then just do three double crochets in that very last oh, chain. three at the end. Okay. Yeah, so you always start each row with three, and in each row with three. Got it. Okay, so that's row one. Okay. Row two, So you're then gonna... you do, do three chains at the end? Yes. Okay. But... Uh-oh. Not with, because you're going to change colors. Oh. Okay. okay. So this is the when you do your first me. color okay. change. Okay. But no, it's not hard. So when you're doing your last double crochet, mm -hmm. remember you don't finish the double crochet. So oh. that when you yarn over, pull through two, that last yarn over before you pull through the last two yeah. is where you change switch your color. your color. Got it. Got yeah. It. So okay. then you're going to switch your color. So you're pulling through that last yarn over. Okay with the new color got it then you chain one okay chain one. chain one it does not count as a stitch that's just your turning chain got it then you're going to single crochet into that first stitch okay and then chain two 
Okay. Okay. Single chain two. Single chain two. And then in the next stitch, mm -hmm. you're going to kind of go down the valley of the shell. You're going to crochet five together. Oh. Double crochet five together. So that means that you insert your hook mm -hmm. or you yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Oh. So you're doing half of the double crochet. Okay. And you're going to do that in over five stitches. Oh, wow. Okay. Got it. So you're going to wind up with six loops on your hook. Holy cow. And then you're going to yarn over, pull through all, all of them. All of them. Got it. So that's completing those five together. Got it. Does that make sense? It does. Then you're going to chain two. Mm-hmm single crochet into the next which should be the top of the shell from the row below got it and then you're going to chain two uh-huh chain two and then you're going to crochet five together so you're double just crochet five together double crocheting all, again the same thing. yes okay so this time you're double crocheting five together so it's like a decrease yes of five got it chain two single crochet and the single crochet always lands into the top of the shell the shell Got right it. does that make sense yep and then the crochet five together is the valley of the shell Fun. does that make sense yeah so you're doing that all the way down okay that's the second row that's the second row and you should wind up with a single crochet one left one single crochet left okay. so you're going to single crochet there keep the same color mm. chain three turn ah. and then this is where you're going to do the, the repeat from row one the repeat from row one get it yeah okay. do you see uh-huh okay so when you do the repeat from row one that you chain three which mm -hmm. we talked about that counts as the first dc and then you're going to do two more double crochets into that same that single same crochet Got it. yeah into that same single crochet then you're going to single, single crochet into the top of that five together, mm -hmm. that's a single crochet. Okay. Yeah. You're skipping the two chains because the chain two was in the two row chains. before. Okay, so you do the three double crochets, you skip those two, you do a single, cro skip the two chains, you do a single crochet mm -hmm. in the five together, mm -hmm. skip the next two change, chains. Change. <laughs> change. <laughs> and then you should be at a single crochet at that point. Then you're going to do five double crochets and into that, that single crochet. Very Does cool. that make sense? Uh -huh. So whenever you're, on top of the the crochet five together that's where that single crochet goes mm. and then the five double crochets will go on top of that single crochet does oh. that make sense yeah, yeah. so, so the shells are offsetting yep. each other from the row before and because that's what, what makes, makes the, the chevron yeah. does that make sense that's so cool and so you're going to do that all the way down okay and then that's, that's where you row. change that's the third row okay and then you change back to the original color got it and so if you just dropped your yarn and didn't fasten off and tie it off mm -hmm. then you can just pick it up and change because uh, it's, it's waiting for you yeah it's waiting for you at the end of the row so you can just pick it up and pull through for to complete that double crochet mm -hmm. on that last one because remember you're going to end with with double. three double crochets That's right okay. on this row got it and then you can just change the yarn color there cool. pull through with the new color and then drop the other the color. other color uh -huh. and then you're going to just go back and forth between those two rows That's so, so either cool. you're crocheting five together and uh -huh. chaining two mm -hmm. or, or you're skipping the chain twos right and you're doing five double crochets and a single crochet alternating those That's right yeah that's so cool does that make sense yes so it's a really cool blanket i, I can't wait to show really you guys pretty. it's very pretty i like it yeah i think i'm going to use this technique for not just a nautical blanket, but for all kinds of blankets because it's mm -hmm. fun and it's easy to do and it mm -hmm. goes really quick. Yeah, because it's it's a repeating pattern. Yeah, yeah. it's just a repeating I pattern. It's that. your kind of a thing because it. it's a shell. I love it. <laughs> but it makes a really cool like shell yes. chevron. I love it. Yeah, and, and that's what I was telling you. I was like, oh, it looks like shell and chevron. She's like, exactly. I'm like, yeah. Yes. It is a shell chevron. So again, this is on AnnieDesignCrochet.com. Thanks, Annie. And it's the crochet nautical baby blanket. Sweet. So we will put a link to that. We will. Yeah. Thanks, Annie, for sharing that with us. Thank you for sharing. And I love that she said sharing is caring. Yay. So we get to share it and we'll get to demonstrate this on video too. I'm excited for that. Yay. Okay. Well, I am excited to get into this week's topic. Oh my gosh. This is going to be so much fun. It is. I love it. Okay. Is it story time? It's story time. Yay. <laughs> Okay, story time. Story time. Okay, so now this is, I got to get into a discussion about 
ghost ships yes versus phantom ships oh okay because they're in a lot of different articles they just all the same ghost ships and phantom ships they put them in together but they really aren't okay yeah so some say ghost ships are the same thing right but ghost ships are physical vessel vessels that are usually found adrift right or yes. sailing themselves but with no crew or life on board yes and there's no easy explanation to why everyone is missing right right for example Okay. December 5th, 1872, the famous Mary Celeste ship was discovered by Captain David Morehouse. Okay. Okay. Which is funny because we were watching our movie uh -huh. and he mentions it and I was like, that's kind of, they, they embellish it, I think. Yes. Yeah. I was yes. like, that's, that's, that's not right. Anyway. Yeah. They found all the crewmen's belongings, six months supply of food and water and the only lifeboat gone. There was a little bit of water at the bottom of the boat, but other than that, the boat was in working condition. There were 10 missing people. What happened to them? What did happen to them? Nobody we have knows. no idea. Nobody knows. Why did they abandon ship? If yeah. there's only if, just a little bit of water and the yes. boat is still floating. Yeah, and everything else is fine. fine. Yeah. So there's all these speculations, but we don't have any concrete evidence of what exactly happened. Oh. So that is a ghost ship. There you go. Yes. Phantom ships. Phantom ships. Are sightings of old vessels that shouldn't be there, but miraculously are like an actual ghost. Okay. okay. So you may even see a ghostly apparition aboard the phantom ship. The most famous one throughout history is the Flying Dutchman. Yay! Yeah. The Flying Dutchman. Which I'm sure you're familiar with because uh -huh. it's an opera. It is an opera, yeah. yes. <laughs> like, oh, that's funny. So in legend, the, the Flying Dutchman was trying to reach Amsterdam in the 17th century amidst a terrible storm. And the captain swore he would reach land even if he had to sail until the doomsday, which led to the curse. Mm -hmm. Now the ship is destined to sail for eternity without ever reaching land. There have been supposed sightings of this ghastly, almost flying ship. The most famous was by a British Royal Naval vessel in 1881 when future King George V was part of the crew and P Prince Albert Victor saw the phantom ship in Australian waters. Oh, yeah. Australia. Yeah. Ooh. The last sighting was during World War II by a German submarine boat commanded by Admiral Carl Donitz. He said donuts. Donuts. <laughs> Did I say that right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> donuts, donuts or donuts d-o-n-i-t-z -I, I don't know i'm sorry oh, i love it okay it's german is that right donuts or donuts, donuts? i like donuts I, donuts is better it makes Not me hungry <laughs> <laughs> Well, he sighted the Flying Dutchman during their voyage through the east of Suez. The Suez? Mm-hmm. Wow. So, yeah. It is everywhere. It's all over. But that was the last official sighting that was like in his logbook. Okay. Mm -hmm. While the subject of ghost ships is still super spooky. Yes. I'm going to dive into stories of a couple phantom ships. <gasps> Ooh. Yeah. And straight up haunted vessels. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Nice. All right. The first one. Please note. Like most of my haunted tales that I uh -huh. do, this story has been very pieced together as every website I research gives different information. Right. Yeah. So there you go. Most of it has the same general outline, but details are very jumbled. I'm going to give you basically everything and let you decide what to think. Okay. I love this. Okay. The Squando. Squando. <laughs> the Squando was a Norwegian ship that sailed in the mid 1800s and its captain was named Niels, Niels Ericsson. First mate, Lars Gunderson, who apparently got along fine and the ship had no troubles. Almost all sites claim that the Squando had sailed and docked um, of, on the, um, uh, I can't even say this one, Embar Embarcadero. Embarcadero. Thank yep. you, Embarcadero, or Eastern Waterfront and Roadway in San Francisco, California in 1890. Oh, okay. Okay. Here it is uncertain whether Captain Erickson had brought his wife on board prior to docking in San Francisco or if he brought her on upon arrival. Either way. Ooh, it's bad luck to have a woman on board. Is oh that what gosh. you're getting to? <laughs> I yes. know my ship lore. You do. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So as she said, sailors back then were superstitious on the sea and thought having a woman aboard a ship was extremely bad luck, right? Yes. And it would anger the sea gods and bring disastrous sailing conditions. Good job, Angela. <laughs> the trip, though, as mentioned prior, had no troubles, but we learned that something happened between Captain Erickson, his wife, and first mate Gunderson. Uh -huh. See, that's what the real trouble is. Yeah. <laughs> having a woman on board. With men that have not seen a woman forever. Right? Yeah. To the point where men are 
fantasizing about mermaids while they see manatees. Yes. Yeah. So if they've gone that long without seeing a woman and there's a woman on board, that's what the trouble is. It's just hormones. Yeah. They're horny. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Well, most say the wife had an affair with the first mate Gunderson and some say Gunderson was stalking her. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the cheating story, Captain Erickson forgave his wife. And then the other Captain Erickson made his next move out of retribution. Both Captain Erickson and his wife, though, were in this together. They decided that Erickson's wife would lure first mate Gunderson to her room while the captain was busy with his duties. Uh Uh-oh. She either got him drunk or plain up seduced him. But then the captain came into the room by surprise and the wife blocked the exit. (gasps) The captain then took an axe or a cutlass and chopped off his first mate's head. Oh my gosh. Bam. Oh. Yeah. And if you couldn't just fire the guy. (laughs) Nope. You had to kill him. (laughs) Straight up. Oh, my blooding. gosh. If you have questions about if the rest of the crew heard any of this, the big book of California ghost stories by Janice Oberding states the pair waited until the crew left the ship. So uh-huh. we planned it out. Then the murderous couple tosses the headless corpse into the San Francisco Bay and keep uh, Gunderson's head in a bucket under their bed. <laughs> yes. There's a head in my bucket, dear Liza, <laughs> dear Liza. <laughs> Either that song was going to pop out yep. or uh, San Francisco Bay. Walk with my baby down by San Francisco Bay. But okay. No, I don't know that one. <laughs> <laughs> I like the other one better. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it was in a bucket or in other stories, it's a, in a locker under the captain's bed. Either okay. Way. I don't they have a locker head. song. Sorry. <laughs> it's they cool. kept the head. They kept the head. How gross. gross. Super gross. Imagine the flies. And the stench. And the stench. Ugh. And, and I boat. don't want to look at this like head. It's hidden. It's hidden. But still, you but have a, you know you have a head. You're just asking for trouble if you keep a head under your bed. <laughs> that rhymes. <laughs> you should make a, a kid's story about this. <laughs> the head under my bed. <laughs> All right. Well, some say Captain Erickson and his wife were discovered in the murder of their first mate and captured, then executed. Another virgin version, virgin. <laughs> Nobody's a virgin here. Where are you no, thinking? No, no. <laughs> After all this, no. Another version is uh, they were captured and the captain was hung, but his wife served her life in the penitentiary. The other virgin. Okay, can't even talk. <laughs> oh my god, guys. Okay, I love it because I have sex on the brain. Uh-huh. The other version is a murderous duo skipped town, never to be seen again. Okay. Yet all accounts agree that Gunderson's head was never recovered. Oh, no. Ugh. Gunderson. Sorry, dude. The headless sailor. Exactly. Most say the ship was cursed either prior to the head being chopped off or after because once the owners of the ship hired a new captain and crew, it didn't last. Oh. Four crew members mutinied. Is that right? Mutinied? Yeah. I, was, I don't know why that didn't look right. Mutinied and killed the new captain. <gasps> yeah. Then another captain died from poison from a cut on his hand. Oh, no. Then another captain died when a violent squall hit the squando at night. Although one tale about the last two captains said both were murdered in their cabins. So either way, none the ca- of the captains the captains survived. die. You Every don't captain's... want to captain the ship. Yeah. <gasps> they keep dying. There is. A, oh, I love that. <laughs> it's it. I don't love it, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you love it, but it's so morbid. You love it. Yeah. Oberding's tale of the Squando mentions that the ship was wrecked in a heavy storm at Bathurst, New Brunswick, Canada in November of 1886. See, the dates on all this are weird. But anyway, 1886, which was before 1890. So yeah. I don't know. The dates are all kind of funky here. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. But the curse and the ghost stories were heavy on the ship. So there was reluctancy to work on the ship's repairs. Either way, it's in the late 18. 18- something 1800s yeah no one wants to be on the ship after this well yeah because especially if you're seen as the captain yeah <laughs> you're, gonna you're gonna die, die. <laughs> yep. you're like nope so yeah not it <laughs> not it but it, it, in all the stories they end it does end up in new brunswick other resources say because of the cursed nature of this ship squando ended up in new brunswick in 1893 so 
again, dates are all kind of funky yeah, here. Yeah, 93 sounds better than... Right, 1886, yeah. 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 So even though the years and accounts on how they ended up in Canada vary, all agree that the Norwegian consul hired watchmen for the ship because they didn't, no one wanted to be on it. So they're yeah. like, let's have people watch it just to make sure it's not like looted or, you know, taken. Right, yeah. So there were two that were initially hired. And here are some of the spooky things that apparently <gasps> happened oh. to them. They see a headless sailor. I know it. Am I right? Oh, she gave me a look, guys. She gave me a look. We'll find out if I'm right. Let's keep going. She's getting ahead of herself. Okay. In one resource, it is said that one watchman was staying in the captain's cabin the first night when he went to light his lantern. As soon as he did this, he felt something firmly grip his sleeve. <gasps> He glanced down and saw a hand covered in blood. Oh, no. He traced the arm to its body, halting at the dripping neck where the head should have been. Oh, so she was right. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's oh, so good. It. It's so good. Yes. Don't sleep in the captain's cabin. Yeah. Why though. would you do that? Like, you know that this curse and it's, it's the cursed. captains that are the yes. ones getting like, you know, killed. So yeah. why would you do that? Don't. Then a rattling noise caught his attention and he slowly turned to the locker under his bunk. Yes. As it opened on its own accord, a round gory head <gasps> rolled out to his feet. Oh, and this head is years old, people. Well, like, it's a ghost head. Years old. The watchman grabbed a lantern and rushed out the door where he spent the rest of the night on the deck. Another account on what happened the first night to the watchman on the ship of Squando. The two watchmen were rudely awakened in the middle of the night when their bedclothes were pulled off and a cold, clammy hand touched their faces. Oh, not their face. No. Nope. <laughs> Get off this ship, boomed loudly at them. And once fully awake, they watched the apparition of a headless man stroll through their cabin and small hand tools were thrown around by invisible forces. Oh, no. A small boat with Uh four ghostly men on board it hovered over the squando and would disappear and reappear at will. Wait, wait, a boat, a small little boat hovering above with four people in it that like were the ghosts. jolly roger like in yeah. peter pan the flying pirate ship yeah. yes yeah but it was just no but not like a huge boat i'm just I'm thinking like a, a, small, a small like dinghy yes okay with four sail four sailors four ghostly sailors oh <gasps> floating above them that's crazy that one creeped me out oh and was the headless sailor part of that no because no, he, he was on he, he was, was on, on the, the ship, ship. Yeah. and so these were just his Random. buds hanging out yeah Wow. Like, well, let's go have some fun. Yeah. Oh, this is good. I love this one. <laughs> I'm so excited. The two watchmen quit the very next day. Yeah. I And yeah. six more watchmen had been hired on afterwards. Those watchmen also had similar experiences <gasps> and would go on to quit soon after being hired as well. Yes. Yeah, no one wanted to stay the night on the ship. No. Unable to hire any more men to keep an eye on the ship, the owners decided to dismantle the squando and sold off the material. <gasps> Don't. Ooh, ooh. So those sold off pieces are haunted and then they're going to go on other boats just like the, just the, like the, the plane. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Ooh, no. Except for he's not a friendly ghost. No, he's not going to protect gonna the help seas. You. He's they're going to like, destroy your yeah. ships. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. No. I like the squando. But what's cool. Yes. In current days, if you go out to the Empar, oh my God, Embarcadero. Embarcadero. Yeah, uh-huh. you say it. On foggy nights, some say you can still make out the ghostly outline of the squando <gasps> sailing along the coastline in San Francisco. Cool. Ghost ship. Ghost ship. Oh, yay. I love it. That one is a good story. The squando. I like it. Okay. We're going to move on to another phantom ship, the Lady Lovey Bond. Lovey Bond? Isn't that cute? <laughs> Lovey Bond. That's so sweet. The Lady Lovey Bond. Yes. This I'm like picturing a, re- a really like dandy of a captain. A dandy. Randy, yeah, a dandy. dandy of a captain just like, you know, with feathers in his cap. And, <laughs> you know. Tri-corner hat with yes, feathers. Yes, yes. The schooner has similar ties to the previous ship, the Squando, in that it revolves around lust and jealousy. Of course. Yeah. The Lady Lovey Bond is one of the most well-known ghost ships seen in British waters. Ooh. Yeah. On February 13th, 1748, this three-mast schooner was to sail along the Thames River near Kent, England, with its final destination in Oporto, Portugal. 
It was a celebratory trip as Captain Simon Reed or Peel in some accounts. Oh, yeah. Okay. Reader Peel had just married his new love, Annetta, and aboard the ship were their wedding guests. Oh, yeah. How lovely. So it's fun. As I've mentioned before, there's a long standing superstition in older times, right? Mm-hmm. That bringing women aboard a ship was extremely bad luck. So the crew was a little on edge. Yeah. Because there's like guests of women, too. And so yeah, like, yeah. Female guests. Yeah. Yep. But it didn't stop all passengers on board from having a really good time and celebrating the couple. All except the best man and first mate, John Rivers. First mates, man. They just don't. Yeah, they can't. They can't oh. hang, man. Yeah. It is said that he fell madly in love with Annetta, unbeknownst to anyone. And he was the best man. Oh. He was overcome with such blind jealousy that he decided to ruin the celebration by crashing the boat. <gasps> yeah. No. Now, I'm going to get into this this really cool patch. Well, not cool, but ominous patch of, of place here. So okay. roughly six miles off the Deal Coast, the very southeast tip of England. So like super, super tiny tip mm-hmm. is what is known as the Goodwin Sands. The okay. Goodwin Sands. Yeah. Okay. They're roughly 10 miles long and lie between 8 to 15 meters below the surface of the English Channel. And it's a really tough area to navigate for ships as and it has unleashed chaos upon vessels sailing in that area, making it one of the most dangerous passages of the English Channel. Okay. During low tide, as much as a tenth of the total area can be exposed and people can actually walk on the sediment. Whoa. So it, it's crazy. It's a yeah. big area. Yeah. When ships attempt to sail through it at high tide, the sediment quickly moves and sucks ships down into the sands. (gasps) Yeah. Oh. Now, roughly 1,000 to 2,000 vessels have wrecked over the years. Dude. So, yeah. That's crazy. It's creepy. Don't sail over there if you don't have to. No. So, this is where Rivers surprised the helmsman and attacked him. He straight up murders him. (laughs) (gasps) <gasps> took, so it takes over the helm and then steered the Lady Lovey Bond into those Goodwin Sands. The ship crashed, drowning everyone on board. Oh. Yeah. And Goal.info mentions that the first mate River's mother actually testified that her son had vowed to have his revenge on the captain, even at the cost of his own life. What? So, Mom. Yeah, because they're like, well, well how do we know what happened, right? And right. she comes she forth. She comes forth and tells the whole, oh. Yeah. She's like, nope, he wanted to kill everybody, apparently tragic ending to such a happy occasion yet it's not really the end (gasps) tell me more (laughs) i'm excited (laughs) i love it 50 years later to the day 50 years 50 years it's february 13th 1798 now okay james westlake the skipper of the eden bridge recorded in his log that a ship almost collided with another vessel with a trio of masts (gasps) Like he, des- love you, Bond. Yep. he described the vessel as a schooner and that it had come so close to the Eden Bridge that he could hear sounds of celebration. <gasps> oh, residual haunting. Thankfully, he was able to turn the wheel hard at the last moment and was able to avoid a collision. And what's even spookier is a fishing boat also reported a sighting of the same thing on the same night. <gasps> But the captain of that fishing boat added he saw the ship continue onward almost unconcerned until it broke up shortly after and crashed, right? Mm -hmm. Rescue efforts were made to retrieve any possible survivors. However, the sandbanks were empty and silent. Wow. So he watches the crash, thinks Uh there's people got to be saved. Right, right. There's no signs of wreckage. That's good. Then. Oh, no, there's more. Okay. February 13th, right? Same day. Uh-huh. Yeah. 1848. How many years is that now? Uh, 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 like what? 10. 50 mm-hmm. more years. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag okay. math. Yeah. Oh, because it was 17. 1798. Now it's 1848. 1848. Okay. I got to so, pay attention to dates here. It's all good. No, no. Okay. Just no. It's, it's 50, 50 years. years. Every 50 years. Wow. Local residents claim to have seen a ship with three masts sailing along, but then collided with the Goodwin Sands. <gasps> and history repeated itself after looking for wreckage or survivors. Nothing was found. Wow. And again. 50 years. Another report happened in 1898. 50 years. Wow. Isn't that crazy? I'm like- <laughs> 
I'm, this is cool. Right? 50 years. So we know exactly what happened because we can just watch the residual. And exactly. Every 50 years. Every 50 years for some reason. Does it still happen? Do we know? Okay. Oh, she's pointing at me. So we'll find this out. Okay. The last reported sighting of mm-hmm. Lady Lovey Bond was when Captain Bull Prestwick recorded his event in 1948. 1948. He was sailing along and saw that he thought was a physical schooner with three masts and was uh-huh. sure it was real, even though he did report that the vessel was giving off a strange and eerie green glow. Oh, <gasps> cool. So he that was the last sighting. In 1998, people tried to catch a glimpse of yeah, the Lady Lovey yeah, yeah. Bond, but it never appeared. Mm. Yeah. Most people think that this is just a legend or a tall tale. But if you want to bear witness, we have another 26 years to find we out. Do. Okay. 26 years, Nicole. We have a date. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put it into my calendar. Yeah, we'll, we'll schedule it now. <laughs> so start saving my money to go to England right now. We can do that. Okay. That's good. 26, 26 years. We can do that. Yeah, we can do that. It was like $100 a, a month or something. I don't know. I don't know math. Is that a lot? <laughs> How much years? money are we spending? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go on our, our, like our crazy, you know, we've got our bucket list. So we'll yeah. be traveling the whole world at that point. Right? Okay. I love okay. it. I love okay. it. 26 years. <laughs> England. Kids will be out of college and married and. Oh, they can help we'll us. We'll be like, old. how old am I going to be in 26 years? I don't even want to think about it. Oh, We're I'll be, be old. old. <laughs> <laughs> We're old. That's all we need to know. That's okay. We'll still go. Okay. okay that deal. was good. Yeah. The Lady Lovey Bond. Lady Lovey Bond. Uh, again, this was a, apparently this is one of England's again most famous ghost ship sightings. So, that's cool. I love it. We're gonna move on to haunted vessels now. Okay. Okay. So one you'll know, one you might. I don't know. Okay. Okay. This one's called the USS Hornet. Have you heard of this one? USS Hornet. USS Hornet. Mm. It's in California. Oh, where? Yeah. So it's currently stationed in Alameda, California, so up north. Okay. Yeah. It's a museum now. The USS Hornet was decommissioned in 1970 after doing some super heavy duty work for the United States Navy. That's my my grand my grandpa. Yay. This huge aircraft carrier was specifically during World War II and was completed in um, 1943. The carrier was then assigned to the Fast Carrier Task Force in the Pacific Ocean and in 1944 was involved in attacks on Japanese installations in various areas. Mm-hmm. It then took part in the Battle of the Philippine Sea in June. Oh, What's up, Philippines? <laughs> then in late 1944, went on to participate in the Philippines campaign and the volcano and Ryukyu Islands campaign in 1945. So it's done a lot. Yeah. The Hornet was badly damaged by a typhoon in June 1945 and returned to the U.S. for repairs. After the war, the USS Hornet helped return troops to the U.S. and later was used during the Korean War. After 1953, it was modernized to help with operating jet-propelled aircrafts and then modernized again for service as an anti-submarine carrier. Cool, right? Mm-hmm. This is what I liked. In the 1960s, you'll like this, it served a minor role in the Vietnam War and notably, it helped recover the Apollo 11 and Apollo 12 astronauts Yay! upon their trip from the moon. Woo-woo! Yeah, isn't that cool? So That's it, cool. it went out to help them come back because they had to, you know, land they in the ocean. Crash in the ocean, yep. yeah. Okay, so as I formerly mentioned, the USS Hornet is now a museum where you can go tour this large vessel and even book overnight tours because staff claim the ship is extremely haunted. (laughs) Cool. Yeah. Staff and visitors claim to see vanishing bloodstains and (gasps) apparitions, including a sailor in dress whites. Often photographs taken in the infirmary reveal shadowy figures Ooh. lying in the beds. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. And people routinely hear voices of men talking as well as footsteps. KAWL, it's 97.1 radio station, took a tour of the ship four years ago. And their docent, yeah, docent? Docent. docent yep. Bill Fee, whom served on a sister aircraft carrier in Vietnam, recounted his spooky tale of the USS Hornet. Ooh. Okay. It was a Friday night and everyone had left for the day. Bill was alone with a flashlight. The ship has um, red lights that usually illuminate the ship at night. So they turn them on. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. However, since he had his handy flashlight, he decided not to turn any of them on. (laughs) Yeah. He's like, cool. I got this. He Uh said at about 2.30 a.m. He woke up because he heard the click of the nightlight at the end of the passageway. (gasps) Then he heard the next nightlight click on. 
He got up, opened the stateroom door, looked down the passageway, and sure enough, all the red lights were on. And you have to physically turn, turn them, them on. on. That's not like an Ooh. automatic thing. Yet he wasn't afraid. Him and his most docents believe that most of the spirits are fellow servicemen and those red lights turning on were spirits just trying to help him out. Oh, that's kind. So Aww, friendly spirits. Yeah. Like Casper. He like Casper. <laughs> <laughs> now, why I mostly chose the USS Hornet. This is the coolest thing. There's a website that Caltech set up specifically for people to write in their ghost stories about the U.S. Oh, that's Hornet. awesome. I love that. Here are a few of them. Yay! Yeah, I know. I love okay. I, I picked only there's like dozens, mm -hmm. dozens of, of people because a lot of the time they have Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts come on uh -huh. or like troops, you know, or things and they do night like they stay the night and they do things. So why? I don't know. <laughs> Just to be creeped out. I have no idea. Oh, that's. That's great. Don't it's do cool, that right? to your little Don't kids. Don't do it. Yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> let my little boys do that. Okay, so first story. I visited the USS Hornet with my family this past summer on reunion day. Because my grandfather had served on her in World War II, we got a private tour by one of the guides, and off we went below decks with a video camera going and my grandfather's small WW2 notebook with the layout of the ship in it. So he's got oh, that's cool. notes yeah, and ready to go. Yeah, that's really cool. Then we took a regular tour with a group of people. We videotaped our whole time there, several hours worth. When we ran the video, we noticed what appeared to be a flash of light down by what was the medical treatment area in World War II. I thought it was just a reflection off of a fixture or something, but there was no light attached to the video camera and no one else was down there except my family and the tour guide and they were all next to me. When huh. we slowed the video down, uh -huh. frame by frame, it isn't a flash of light at all. What you can clearly see is a sleeve of a white uniform with dark stripes at the end of the sleeve and a oh. hand in reaching across the hallway. Oh, I got chills, Nicole. <laughs> that one's good. It is a side view and it appears at the far end of the hall slowly. Then it is pulled back suddenly. We are standing still at the time. This is in the background far back in the hall. What you find in the frame in the foreground just past the doorway near where we are appeared to be a faint, but you can make out one sailor with his white hat cocked back on his head and a pack of cigarettes rolled up in his short sleeves, cradling an injured man's head in his lap that is sprawled out on the ground. Oh. There is no doubt about the sleeve I spoke about in the background being there. As for the sailor in the foreground, several of us watched it in slow motion a lot. Some here felt it might just be a reflection off of the floor, but we all agreed we could clearly make out the pack of cigarettes rolled up in the short sleeve shirt. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. None oh. of this is visible when you watch the video normally, except for what appears to be a brief flash of light. You only see this when you go frame by frame. <gasps> I love it. Oh, that's good. Isn't that creepy? Because you know that's that's what they did back then. Mm -hmm. Like the way they the yeah, 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 so. yeah. Oh, oh, that's good. <laughs> you like gave yourself one. the shivers. I on did because <laughs> I like that one. I, again, I'm only copying ones that I really, really like on here. Mm -hmm. Next one. This happened while I was serving as dock master at NAS Alameda. And so there's a lot of shortened things that I had to look up, but I didn't put them in my notes. Sorry. But it says I, uh, I was a BM1 SW at the time. And I think I tell you what a BM1 is later. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's been over 10 years from the last time I was on the USS Hornet. After my last dead stick of the Hornet to Pier 1, I was so upset that I played sick for the next two moves. Only just now do I tell my story as I have seen others come out with sightings and I don't feel so much like a fool anymore. Anyhow, here's my story. Oh, God. 1995 or 96, I'm not sure which, we had a lot of ship traffic coming in and out of Alameda. The Lincoln had just left and they wanted to get the Hornet over to Pier 1 for some reason or another. I always hated dead sticking like the Hornet. It moved like a cow. It took all day and I always got a sign, the Fox, Foxel, the forward part of the ship below the deck, traditionally used as the crew's living quarters. Mm. Foxel. Mm -hmm. At the time, I was a BM1. This is a rank as it's a petty officer first class. Right? Okay. Okay. The Foxel was always hot during the summer and no power made it just that much more interesting. Well, we cast off the lines and the tugs pulled us off the pier. I had two line handlers with me and the transit from one pier to the next was likely to take an hour or so. 
They wanted to go up and check out the flight deck. I, t I told them no problem, but get the mooring lines ready to run first. They went ahead and laid out the line and tied the heavy line, heaving line to the eye. The heaving line was up on the deck and the bitter end was passed through the chalk. Okay, I don't know all those terms. <laughs> he, this is boat very, stuff, boat yeah, stuff, boat stuff, boat yeah. Stuff. They left and closed the QAWTD, which I found out was quick acting watertight doors. Hey. Hey. And they closed them behind them. Okay. I was sitting by myself when I noticed that the mooring line was passed through the bits in the wrong direction. I mumbled out loud, that ain't going to work. And I froze as I heard a voice behind me say, that isn't right. <gasps> I turned around and didn't see anyone. Nobody was there. I walked to the forward part of the room and checked the WTD watertight door. It was chained shut. I shook it off and went back to the line. The out of, then out of the corner of my eye, I saw someone walking by. I don't know what it is, the capson. I turned and figured it was a line handler. He was wearing dungarees. I asked mm -hmm. him if he had said something. He didn't even look at me and he bent over and looking at something. At that moment, something caught my eye and I blinked. When I looked back, the sailor was nowhere to be found. Oh. <laughs> I will open the quick acting watertight door and went into the hallway. I was scared. I waited till the line handlers came back and then went back in with them. I never told them or anyone else a thing. I didn't want to be figured as one of those ghost kooks. Yeah. Anyhow, I saw a TV special on ghosts on the Hornet and they mentioned activity in the Foxhill area. So I figured it wouldn't hurt to finally tell my experience. Things I know for a fact I was the only one in the foxhole at the time. My line handlers had shut the quick acting, uh, quick acting watertight doors, and there's no way anyone could have opened it without me hearing it. Mm -hmm. And all other doors were chained or locked shut. And this guy's a U.S. retired Navy. That's cool. Definitely not one to exaggerate or make no, up stories. No, or, exactly. Yeah. So that he, that was a story that was going to go to his grave with him. Yeah, and until he to, finally like, was like, "Okay, I think I can release this now." So, oh, that's a good one. Isn't that creepy? Yes, I got a couple more. Okay, I work on the Hornet for Live Aboard program, and part of the program involves telling ghost stories in the forecastle. Every now and then, one of the other crew members decides to put on a sailor uniform and scare the kids. I'm used to seeing him, right? <laughs> but one night as he walked out to the, of the bullnose, I saw another man in a sailor uniform behind him. <gasps> he was there for a split second uh -huh. and then vanished. Later in the month or on a different live aboard, I saw the same man on the catwalk. Once again, he vanished into thin air. <gasps> Yay. You don't have to put on the sailor suit. No, to you don't the kids need to. They're already there. They're there, man. Just look for him. Okay. There's one last one. Okay. My husband and I went with my aunt to tour the USS Hornet. At the end of the day, when the tours were closing down, my husband drug me off into a section of the ship that was obviously not open to tourists. The hallways were dark. The side rooms had bed frames just tossed into them, debris strewn all over like a trash heap. I was getting nervous we would either get lost or get into trouble for being in a section that was closed. Uh huh. Suddenly, a full uniformed officer came from around the corner. I knew for sure we were in trouble. He walked past us. He never made any eye contact nor acknowledgement of our presence whatsoever. He then turned into one of the rooms about 10 feet ahead. We followed behind him. And when passing the side room, he went into again, piled high with bed frames and whatnot. He was gone. <laughs> I told my husband we had to get out of there. Uh -huh. Just then my camera crashed to the floor. The camera came apart from the strap. I have owned this camera for eight years Never before and never since has a camera come off the strap. Oh, good, good, good. That's good. Yep. <laughs> I think back now and I think what set off alarms was a lack of air movement as he walked by and no acknowledgement that we were even there. Right? I truly believe we saw a ghost. Yes. So there's That's apparitions everywhere, residual. Oh, let's go. Let's go, Nicole. Well, okay. So I really want to go to San Francisco so we can do Alcatraz <gasps> and we can go next mom trip. Yes. San Francisco. San Francisco. We can take a next train. mom trip. Yes. Okay. We got it. We got it. Okay. Another bucket list, guys, but this one's actually doable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's not, let's go to England yeah, in 26 no. <laughs> years when we're in our 90s. <laughs> oh, math. <laughs> 90s. I love you. 
<laughs> okay. We got one last one. Okay. And you know this one. I do. The Queen Mary. I love the Queen yes. Mary. Now, what's funny about okay. this, I was telling my husband, I was like, we, I went on the Queen Mary when I first moved to California. Mm-hmm. I went on there and I, we did the ghost tour and everything. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. And it wasn't the one where you do like the, like they do during Halloween where it's mm-hmm. like crazy. Yeah. Theatrical. I, I went during Halloween where right. they had the mazes set up and that was back when the Spruce Goose was still. Yeah. And it wasn't carnival. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Oh, carnival gosh. Took over. oh my gosh. Yeah. So yeah, that's when I went. Okay. So we have experiences on the Queen Mary. Do you? Well, I'll tell you my you tell me this and okay then i'll tell you You'll my tell story okay yeah. perfect perfect but yeah so i i mean we never felt anything and and but i wish i knew the research i mean they go through it you know but if yeah. i knew more i would have looked harder i think yes okay so now the queen mary is known as the most haunted hotel in yes. america which is so cool it was a ship turn hotel in long beach california now, construction began on the RMS Queen Mary in 1930 in Clydebank, Scotland, mm-hmm. which is fun. Fun yeah. story about the name. I didn't know this one. The board of directors at Cunard wanted to name Project 534 Queen Victoria to mm-hmm. keep with the tradition of the IA suffixes, right? Right. Mauritania, Aquitania, Berengaria, right? Right, right, right. So the directors went to King George for his blessing and they said, we have decided to name our new ship after England's greatest queen. After Queen Victoria, right? Right. The king responded, my wife will be delighted that you are naming the ship after her, which uh, is Queen Mary. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. That's oh, how that's it became awesome. the Queen Mary. Seven years later, the Queen Mary was ready to make her debut as a way to sail the seas in the most extravagant way. She has five dining rooms and lounges, two cocktail bars and swimming pools, a grand ballroom, a squash court, and even a small hospital. Mm-hmm. May 27th, 1936, the Queen Mary departed Southampton, England on its maiden voyage. When World War II broke out, the ship was converted into a troop ship and ferried Allied soldiers. Then after the war, the Queen Mary was refitted for passenger service and commenced the two-ship transatlantic passenger service and was officially retired from service in 1967. Long time. On Long the time. On Halloween, October 31st, 1967. Aww. Yeah. The Queen Mary left Southampton and sailed to the port of Long Beach, California, where it has permanently remained. <laughs> Soon after the Queen Mary permanently docked in Long Beach, many claimed and still claim that the ship is incredibly haunted. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Okay. So before I get into the actual haunts. Yes. Note there are so many articles about murders. That took place in room B-474. Yes. I don't think that's right. <laughs> you don't think it's right? No. Oh, okay. So they say a father killed his wife and his daughters. And I couldn't find any newspaper articles about it. Plus, there's actually ship logs of deaths on the... On right. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's not listed in there. Interesting. So I, can't, I don't know if that's true or not. So urban legend yes. or cover-up. It could be, yeah. We don't yeah, know. Either one. But I just didn't see anything. Like... Okay. Murders, murders, beast, four, seven, four, this fire went crazy, right? right. Yeah. No, I didn't see anything about that. So, you know, you believe what you want, but I don't know if I believe in that one. Okay. But there have been deaths on this ship. There have been lots of deaths. (laughs) Yes. Yes. So the Travel and Leisure website recently posted a really good article where they have compiled the most haunted places in the ship. And I'm going to be citing a lot of it. Okay. Okay. So good job. I think the articles people are Allison Fox and Elizabeth McLennan. Hey, good job. That's awesome. Okay. But I'm going to jump around. So stateroom B340. Okay. Yeah. B340. B340. This is if we can. So right now, because of COVID, yeah. they shut it down yeah. right, as a hotel. Yeah. This is this was going to be our next mom trip. We want to stay on the Queen Mary. I do it is want something to. that we are going to do when, yes. when it reopens. I but want it's not to. open yet. Stateroom B340 is expensive, though. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> we will have to save our pennies yeah. for this one. <laughs> if we want to stay in the most haunted, and it's it's funny, I'll, I'll go into it, but there's not even, it doesn't even show the, the um, number of the hotel room because uh-huh. people keep stealing the numbers off right. of it because yeah. it's haunted. But it's like $500 a night to stay there. We can do that for one night. We split it. Yeah, That's we split okay. It. That's true. Yeah. We split it. Okay. We okay. can do it. All right. Well, hauntings have occurred in this room since the 1960s. Oh. Yeah. This room originally was three third class state rooms and then remodeled into one large guest room suite so it is larger than the average cruise ship cabin oh the legend is that in 1948 
British third class passenger Walter J. Adamson passed away in the room, but details of his death are unknown. In 1966, Mm -hmm. a woman staying in the room reported she was woken up when the bed covers were pulled off of her Mm -hmm. and was surprised to see a man standing at the foot of her bed. (laughs) She sprang from her bed screaming and rang for the steward. However, the man vanished into thin air. Oh, creepy. So this guy is like in this room all the time. Yeah. In 1967... Okay. Guests staying in B340 complain that they heard knocking on their door in the middle of the night. And that is a common complaint from guests to this day <gasps> in B340. Nice. Other complaints include bathroom lights turning on by themselves. <laughs> Do you remember <laughs> that? <laughs> from our trip. From our trip. So we, you guys know, if you've been listening since the beginning, we oh. did stay at a haunted hotel. We stayed at the Hotel Dell on yes. our last momcation. And the lights kept turning on in our bathroom. They kept turning on. And Angel we was out. In one of, I was. I was totally she was out. Totally out. I, I'm like sensitive. So Nicole's I'm like, like waking up. Yeah. The lights kept. Like, What's turning going on? on? What's going on? We weren't staying. We weren't fortunate enough to stay in one of the haunted rooms there. There are two famously right. haunted rooms, and we didn't get to stay in either one of, them, one of them. Although we were on the same floor as one. That's right. A few doors down. Yeah. It, or, um, a hallway down or yeah. something. But the lights kept turning <laughs> on in the bathroom, and it was freaking Nicole out, and she didn't sleep the whole night and she finally figured out that every time the air conditioner turned on it turned the light on which is crazy <laughs> like how sensitive those lights are when it's just the air conditioning oh that was so funny oh, so frustrating okay <laughs> i was like yes our room's haunted no. yes but we did see kate morgan though she did that's show true up. she came and said hi to us go back and listen to that episode the hotel yeah, yeah. Del, guys. so yeah lights keep turning on in the bathroom the, the sink faucet turns on and off on its own and ex- unexplained bathroom door shutting And even some guests similar to the first sighting report the covers being pulled off of them and seeing a dark figure at the foot of the bed. I want that to happen. Why? The covers being pulled off and seeing a dark figure. Why not? I want my covers. Thank you. (laughs) I don't need you to mess with me. No, but I'll be like right there. So it'll just be. Yeah, I'll push you towards the ghost. (laughs) (laughs) But yes, that's that's some notoriously most haunted room. Nice. Yes. Now the first class swimming pool. The Queen Mary had two swimming pools, one for first class passengers, one for second class, and both pools were free for guests to use, which fun fact, I didn't know this Mm -hmm. back then in ships. Most of the time it was free for men to swim in a pool. Women had to pay. What? Yeah. Titanic. Uh And there was another ship that I was reading, but yeah, women had to pay to swim. Uh, What is that? (sighs) That's a whole other podcast. That's that's whole- that is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and this yes. is a fact though. Men and women did have to swim at different times too. Oh, okay. Yes. Cause women are too distracting. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. We're, our bodies are awesome. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> okay. It's closed to guests now for safety reasons and, and structural issues and loose tiles would be a hazard to even go around it now. But the first class pool had a mother of pearl ceiling, elaborate mosaic tiles, and an illuminated fountain. So it was really pretty. Oh, it sounds beautiful. Yeah. Now, there's a speculation of a couple haunts in the pool due to drownings, but there's no evidence or records of this. Mm -hmm. However, paranormal reports around the pool include seeing wet footprints when there's no water in the pool, right? Mm -hmm. To a woman in a wedding gown with a young boy in a suit next to her. To a little girl in a blue and white dress that Ooh. vanishes just as quickly as she is spotted, which reminds me of oh, that's cool. Ghost ship, ghost ship, yeah. She's in a blue little and white Katie. dress. Yeah. Yes, they may have gotten that the Probably. inspiration from that. Oh, yeah. I bet. Yeah. Bill Sauter, the historical consultant, recalled watching a woman walk down the stairs in the pool area. Uh-huh. She was in her early twenties, wearing fashion from the nineteen sixties. The stairs are ceramic, so are really noisy when you walk on them right however she didn't make a sound (gasps) she was looking down and he could see her clearly Mm -hmm. so he went to go greet her but when he she walked behind a pillar she disappeared (gasps) and this is a historical consultant yeah oh cool so cool 
All right, next. Yes. The Queen Salon. The Queen Salon is a first class lounge, and here there have been many reports of the Lady in White or the White Lady. Lady in White. She is seen in, you guessed it, a long white evening gown and usually likes to dance to unheard music. She can be seen in the lounge or in the surrounding corridors. Dane Valentina was ghost hunting when she snapped photos in the lounge area. When she got home and reviewed the photos, she found one particular photo with a corridor and a figure at the end of it wearing all white. Wow. You see it? Oh, that's like a real full bodied apparition. Guys. She didn't see it in person, but it showed up on her on her photos. It's a real like it's a a real full bodied person yeah. like wearing looks white like a person wearing white yeah yeah that that's creepy? impressive that's a good one that's a good photo Ooh, good evidence <laughs> next yes watertight door number 13, 13. yes this is very famous on yes. the floor on july 10th 1966 the queen mary was at sea when weather became turbulent and the watertight doors and boiler rooms were ordered to be closed Soon after the watertight doors were shut after inspection, engineering staff found 18-year-old John Petter crushed between the door number 13. 13 yeah. They weren't sure if this was due to him accidentally getting shut in or playing chicken with the doors, which they did like to do time to time, yeah. or if he was running back to get his spanner or wrench because he forgot it. Either way, the door was opened and he was taken to the sick bay. His arms, chest, and pelvis were damaged and he was bleeding from his nose. They tried giving him morphine to help ease the pain, but he sadly passed away. Mm -hmm. Staff and visitors often report seeing his ghostly vis visage near the watertight door number 13 and sometimes hear someone behind them running and whistling. Mm -hmm. Several people would have seen or would see an engineer wandering the hallways asking if they had seen his wrench, but then they went back to find him. He had disappeared. Oh. Guards would patrol with dogs to make mm -hmm. sure no one was trying to hide away or, you know, stall into the, right. and the Queen Mary. And they would hear noises from door number 13. Mm -hmm. But the dogs refused to move any closer to the door until the noises would cease. Oh, wow. So dogs are freaking Doggies. out. They Man, it. animals. Animals. They get it. You they need to keep. I, that's just why I like having a dog. You, you have to. Ha yes. <sighs> I don't think I will ever not have a, a right? dog. Right? I yes. always want a dog. Yeah. There is a specific case told on August 13, 1991, when a couple visited the Queen Mary. They were told the tale of crewman Petter and the haunting, so they jokingly invited him to join them on the tour. Uh-oh. Everything was fine. Careful what you wish for. Yep. Until they passed through the door number 13, when they felt another presence join them, and the woman felt as if something brushed by her. When she looked back to ask her husband if he felt anything, she saw smears of grease on his face and clothes that hadn't been there a second ago. <gasps> and she had the same grease smears as well. Oh, cool. So apparently the grease smears happened to other visitors and staff as well after walking past the door number 13. Wow. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Now there are a few more ghosts and haunts of the Queen Mary. Yes but I wanted to touch on the more well-known paranormal phenomena. So I didn't okay. get to them. Yes. But hopefully we can visit. Yes. We will do a whole, when we go, because yeah. we are going, we will do an entire podcast dedicated to yeah. the Queen Mary. And okay. we'll do it on the Queen That's Mary. That's what I want to do. Yes. We should record it on yes. the Queen Mary. So once they get back open again, yes. that's where we're going. Yay. We're doing I'm that. excited. So I've been to the Queen Mary once before. Okay. And it was during, you know, when they would do the haunted mazes and stuff. So, sure. which I scare so easily people. I like, don't like the mazes. I'm sorry. I don't sorry. like the mazes. I don't like people I like ghost popping stories. out. Yes. I don't like the people trying to touch me. And like, I know, I know where they're going to be. I right. know they're going to be behind the corner. I know they're going to be in this area or whatever. And so... And they know I'm an easy target because I go in, <laughs> I'm always like trying to hide behind somebody. I go in and I immediately point and yell, I see you, I see you, I see you. <laughs> and that's just a challenge. Right. It's a challenge to them. Yep, and they still scare me and I still scream. Of course. One time I was at a haunted house in Texas where I grew up. I was a teenager 
and I was the last person in my group. And mm. th- I think this is where my fear and hatred of haunted houses comes oh, from. Because no. <laughs> I was the last person in the group. They aren't allowed to touch you, right? You, you're not allowed but to be touched. they get in your face. They and get in that. your face. I hate they that. So I want to punch face. them. Right? So there was a guy with just a flashlight. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't see him. I just saw the flashlight. And I remember screaming at the flashlight. And he thought that was hilarious. So Aww. he followed me through the oh, entire maze no. right behind me. He was like, give me a kiss. Just give me a kiss. I right behind me. Him. And I'm like, stop, leave me alone. Stop chasing me. Leave me alone. And yelling at him the whole time and like crying and freaking out. Right. He followed me through the entire house. And when we came out of the house, he's like, I want to thank you. You made my night. You were awesome. Oh, what a jerk. And I was just like, get away. Yeah. And I kept yelling at him to get away from me. Right. So I think that's like why I hate them so much. Yeah, I would hate them too. Um, but so my Queen Mary story, when I was on the, we, we did them, um, they had a maze going through the boiler room. Ooh. Ooh yes. Fun. And the only thing I remember about being in the boiler room is that I wanted to get out of there as fast as I could. You like I something? went through, you know, other parts of the Queen Mary and mm-hmm. then there was like a big dance party in the ballroom and, mm. you know, so, and that was fine. Sure. The rest of the Queen Mary was fine. But in the boiler room, I needed to get out of there fast. I, I felt like I felt so just terrified. I sure. needed to get out of there. And it was just, you know, normal, all the normal stuff. Right. And when I got out of there, everything else that happened that night, people coming around behind you or skidding on their knees and the sparks flying, you know, whatever. Right. Didn't scare me. I was just like, yeah, you're not scary. I see you. Yeah. Yeah. I felt nothing. I was completely numb from that point on. But in the boiler room, I was like, I have to get out of here. I have to get out of here. I felt like so much energy happening in there. Huh? Interesting. Yeah. That's all I remember from my trip to the Queen Mary was how much I needed to get out of the boiler room. That's scary. Sorry. It's okay. We'll, we'll go check it it's out. It's kind again. of a cool. Yeah, I want to go back now yeah. and see what my experience is. Because at that point, I just knew it was haunted. I didn't know any of the stories. Yeah. So exactly. I didn't know exactly. about door 13. I yes. didn't know how haunted the boiler room was. I just thought it was like a scary no, place. No, it's and, got some tragedy. And I was there. in college, so I wasn't in California that mm, long. Right. I had just right. moved. So. Uh, I knew nothing about the Queen Mary other than it was haunted. Yeah. And they they have haunted houses there. That's well, all I knew. There you go. We have to go back now. Yeah, we have to go back now. Stay the night. Yes. Yay. There's a lot of ghost ships that I found. Yes. Tons and tons of ghost ships where so it's just cool. missing people, which, you know, that's that's creepy. Like I said, when there's missing people and you can't you find them. You don't know where they went. Right. Yeah. But yeah, we'll go into what they talk about the Mary Celeste on the ghost ship movie because it's not right. <laughs> it bothers you. I can it see it. It really in your bothers face. me. So is it movie time now? It's totally movie time. Uh, it's movie time. All right, this week's movie is Ghost Ship. Ghost Ship. It was released in 2002. That was just like it's, signs. It's a very 2002 yeah. movie. Yeah. Signs came out Juliana Margulies, baby. Yep. yep. IMDb rating is 5.5 stars. And here's the synopsis. A salvage crew discovers a long lost 1962 passenger ship floating lifeless in a remote region of the Bering Sea and soon notices that its long dead inhabitants may still be on board. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, so I was saying, they like go into the story. <laughs> I like the dramatic. What grinds my gears? Bit. Yeah, grinds my gears. I mean, they they find the ship, right? And they're yes. like, let's go on the ship because it, they're salvage crew. They want to get the ship for money, and they're like, oh, this one ship is like missing. But he's talking about the Mary Celeste, right? And he's right. saying, yeah, it was a bo- it was floated, but it was like full speed. Remember we was saying it was like uh-huh. it was still on it was and it was, it had sailed so far over a certain amount of days. It's like, no, that's not right. It uh-huh. was people missing, uh-huh. but it wasn't like sailing itself right, you know, right. across the world. It, it couldn't. I mean, like it no. was adrift. Yeah. And it may have found a current. Yeah. And but it's gone. Yeah. So but they made it. They tried to make that spookier. That's the, the biggest yeah, thing that it, I got mad at. Because it didn't make sense that it wound up in the Bering Sea. Yeah. 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 So it was stupid. But anyway, I thought this was a really cool start. <laughs> yes. Okay. Right? We're, we're like grabbing <laughs> each other right now. Yes. I saw this movie mm-hmm. before. Right. Like, you know, like 20 ago. years ago. <laughs> when it came out. When it came out. Yeah. I saw it a long time ago. 
And the only thing that stuck with me was the beginning because it's, so, it's creepy. so jarring. Yeah, just because like you were right not right expecting that. No, to you don't expect that mm-hmm. at all. And it was very graphic for yes. the time. And so that image, yeah, stuck with me. Where the and it you gets guys, you. The, there's a there's a line that cuts everybody in half. Yeah, <laughs> you see the bodies like yeah. come apart. It's cool. Yeah. I think that was pretty cool. It was cool. And it gets you right. And it's like, yeah. okay, what's this movie gonna happen? You know. And so then you see the salvage crew save a ship and blah blah blah. And some right. guy comes and tries to go. Hey, there's this big ship I found because I'm a pilot. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, okay. I'm I'm a pilot and I saw the ship. I found the and, ship and, and I, there's money. I'm just, gonna hire you guys. Yeah. So let's go salvage the ship. Exactly. Yeah. So I thought this was cool. I was like, oh, this is gonna be fun. Yeah this then obviously ghost ship they're gonna see ghosts and everything right which they do which they do and that got creepy and i was like cool 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 and then and then the story turns and then <laughs> i got so mad because i was like oh yeah because i saw it before too mm-hmm. but i think i forgot about it because it was so stupid like yeah yeah this like demon thing right he's like yeah he's a demon he's a demon trying to get souls Yeah, he's a demon mm-hmm. like it's like poltergeist trapping souls like yeah yeah he's kind of like the the story of the flying dutchman where it's a curse ship and they go around uh collecting souls, souls yeah. yeah stupid yeah i'm sorry yeah the whole unmarked soul you can't control them yeah because they haven't they're an innocent they're so soul they innocent, haven't done anything so you can't control them very mm-hmm. well but they're taking souls i yeah. was like oh this turn i was like if this was just a haunted ghost ship like floating around and like really creepy ghosts and things then that would have been cooler i think but yeah instead they murdered the entire cast so yeah <laughs> <laughs> which i get they had to do something and has to go around i thought it was cool that carl urban was in here i totally forgot this was one of his first roles mm-hmm. yeah because i love him in thor <laughs> <laughs> so i was like oh hey you're like yeah it's carl urban. i know he's in the boys now but yeah, yeah but anyway and acting was okay you know it wasn't like yeah it was fine it was 2002 right. so you know it it was good for 2002 sure and it's not, you know, 20 years later, it's not like as exciting yeah. as what it could it could have been be now. Yeah. The thing I found most jarring was like the way the music, the way the music starts in the beginning. You have this beautiful 1960s yes. like Italian yeah. um, or I, I'm assuming she's Italian. Italian. Yeah. So she's singing in Italian and, and this beautiful like 1960s kind of um, big band yes. kind of music happening. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And then the closing credits, you have death oh, metal. metal. <laughs> <laughs> because the guy was one of the, the crew members was listening to metal yeah. on the ship. And I was like, boo. Yeah. Why boo. would you do that? <laughs> that, that, that? That was dumb. That was so funny. I was like, this is such a turn in the music from where we started. <laughs> and how we got to, how we got this far. It really shows the, the trajectory of the movie. It right. starts off like a really Real cool, Almost romantic. beautiful opening yeah. scene, and the colors are vivid, yeah, and it's very bright and beautiful, yeah. and then it goes super grungy and, <laughs> and weird, <laughs> metal, yeah, yeah, but yeah, metal. and then like, yeah, obviously these are all spoilers, but yeah, I well, mean, it's a twenty-year-old twenty, yeah, you should twenty-year-old movie, movie if you yeah. want to see it. Don't see it if you don't want to see it. Yeah, I mean, it's you know. three dollars to rent to rent yeah. right now, and you know, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That that was my feeling on the movie. It's like, meh. It's, yeah, it's okay. That's how I felt if too. it was free and on, I would let it play. Sure. But like you had to rent this. I movie. had to rent it to watch it. I, I would have like, rather oh. rented signs than this movie. Yeah, I like signs. Yeah, I would have paid for that. Hold up better. better. Yeah, because there's they were a both new in Night Shyamalan movie coming out. Is it you really? Yeah. No. Speaking, of, I just saw an ad for it, and this has nothing to do with our uh, podcast right now. That's but okay. yeah, well, we like just movies. Hey FYI, guys, movies. there's a new M Night Shyamalan movie coming. Cool. Out. Yeah, we'll have to check it out. Yeah. Well, yeah. So I, as you can tell, I was like not underwhelmed. Impressed. Yeah. It. I mean, it was. It was fine. It was it cool was for a ship movie, but that they turned that plot that just kind of got me. The pool filling with blood. That was kind of neat. That was creepy. The flashback mm-hmm. was kind of the fun. flashback. Yeah, that was a good retelling yes. of the story. Yeah. I enjoyed that. Kind of going good. from scene to scene, figuring going from out scene what was to going scene. on. Yes, that was good. Yeah, some of the jump scares got me a little bit. Yeah, little I mean bit. there was good moment i don't know why i just felt so <laughs> meh about this movie you're getting you're getting immune to horror movies i guess so but yeah it was okay i, I agree i mean because it wasn't i think because it wasn't like paranormal i mean yes it, it was, there were lots of paranormal elements but yeah. it was Controlled. a murder yeah movie yeah 
people dying. It was like a serial killer. Everyone yeah, was dying. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. see that now. Yeah. So that's probably why I was kind of like, meh. Yeah. That doesn't turn me on. Slasher things yeah. don't really turn me on. Yeah, and it dying. turned into a slasher. It did. Yeah. It kind of started off as a slasher in a way. Well, but that was, you know. That was kind of cool, though, the, the way they did it. Yeah. yeah. You didn't know that it was humans that were yes. that did that you thought the ship was yeah possessed that's or what something. You, it made it feel like huh yeah so how many stitches would you give this one i give it because i thought it started well yes and i thought they had a good premise mm-hmm. but then it just turned right didn't like the demon i did it killing everybody no that was mm-hmm. stupid and then he's there again i was like one survivor he's there again killing i was like yeah oh, and at the on. end he, she's like no <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't get on the ship. Okay. I give it a 3.5. 3.5? Yeah. Oh, that's fair. Right? Yeah. Because it has some some small elements of cool things and then yeah. it just turned out bad. But It was cooler in 2002. Two. Yeah. And now it's like, I wish it was like, I just, I don't like the slasher element yeah. of it. That's just not my thing. Okay. So what do you give it? I, I would, three, 3.5 okay. is good. Yeah. Same. Right there. Same. Same. Yay. Same. Same. <laughs> Well, I, and then again, though, you guys, I have, I, I'm so into my themes, so I had to pick a, a ghost, a ghost, ghost ship movie, movie. Yeah. and this was like the best one I could find. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> I wish I could find a better one, unfortunately. There, and my husband was trying to help me too. He's uh-huh. like, well, what about this movie? I was like, but it's not paranormal. Like, yeah, yeah. it has to have that element, yeah. Yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, there you go. It's okay. It's, it's fun. If you guys want to see a ghost ship movie, yeah. I mean, this literally is called Ghost Ship. Exactly. And the opening scene is cool. Yeah. And... It does unfold like <laughs> this. St- I you do the same thing I am. I know because the story I think is cool. I just it's didn't cool really paper, like probably. the movie. Yeah, I think if you read this <laughs> as a book, if you read it as a book, it would be way cool. It would be way cooler. Yeah. Yeah. So I someone agree. wrote it out and was like, "Oh, this would be good on film." No, it didn't translate very well. Yeah. So I agree. Yeah. 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 All right. And the eating of the maggots. Ew. Uh, <laughs> they're all like, oh, this is so tasty. I was like, I knew that was. Yeah. That's a Pullman guy thing again. Yeah. It's like that, that throwback to like, yeah. you don't know what you're doing. So anyway. Yeah. Anyway. So watch it if you want to. I don't know if it's worth the $3, but meh. you know, meh. If it's free, go ahead and watch it. Yeah. If it's free, watch it all you want. You get that it's Cinemax really attachment you to your <laughs> Amazon <laughs> and watch go. it. <laughs> there you go. Well, that was another super awesome es- episode. I yeah. really enjoyed the ghost ships ghost ships so good phantom ships oh they were so it was so good yeah. like i really want to see one now it's right so i'm gonna go sit in the ocean now. and i can't wait till we get to go on our mom date mom on date. the Queen mary Woo. <laughs> high fives high fives <laughs> in san francisco and we'll we're go to san francisco we go to alcatraz too. yeah we do we can record there yeah Ooh. <laughs> Well, if you guys want to continue to support our podcast and help us do all these amazing things that we're yeah. planning on and buy more yarn, please check out our patron yes. on Podbean. Please. So you can go to our Podbean, which is... Oh, just Google Podbean patron TOS. TOS is the ominous stitch. The ominous stitch. You can find it, I promise. You can find it. So go to our Podbean yep. and become a patron. Help support our channel. Please. We would love Join your support. Our we will give you shout outs. We'll send you things. We'll send you stuff. Uh, you can also email us at the ominous stitch at gmail.com. That's right. Let us know what you have going on. If you're stitching something really cool. <gasps> yeah. Even if it's not one of our things that we're doing. Or, yeah. Or, you know, Give us patterns. some inspo for other yeah. things that you would like for us to demonstrate on this channel. We'd love that. We'd love it. Or if you have any paranormal stories Ooh, or yes. true crime stories, yes. we really want to do a listener's episode. Please. So please send us your stuff so yes. that we can get going on that listener episode. Yes. soon. That would be really cool. Yeah, it would. And I guess that's it. That's it this week. Check out all of our Instagram and yep, socials. Every yeah, social. We're doing lots of socials now. Yeah, we are. Trying. Nicole is the queen of social I'm media. Trying. I am so bad. You guys, I just downloaded TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> TikTok. But it's good because you go, go down a rabbit hole and you just can't stop watching. Oh, so no. Be careful. That's not good. I don't have time for that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no time in the world. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess that's it for this episode. Yes, we is. will see you guys next time. So we'll see you, Stitchers. See you, Stitchers. Cheers.